Now, furthermore, British Ambassador Owen Jenkins and the United Kingdom Trade Commissioner Natalie Black took part in the UK Southeast Asia Tech Week. During this event, the UK tech companies will also participate in a range of workshops and engagements with Indonesian investors, businesses and government agencies with a particular focus on partnership opportunities on the internet and technologies for net zero. And for more on the matter, our very own Indra Marpao has an interview with the United Kingdom Trade Commissioner Natalie Black up in the following coverage. Let's take a look. Natalie Black, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, is the UK's first His Majesty Trade Commissioner for Asia Pacific and the UK's Senior Economic Official to ASEAN. Based in Singapore, she leads the UK trade and investment strategy and operations across 15 markets. Focusing on the relationship between trade, tech, and sustainability, Natalie launched the UK's first digital trade network, initiated the UK's first digital economy agreement with Singapore, and plays a key role in securing new investment and expansion opportunities for UK's business across Asia Pacific. I would like to welcome Natalie to Indonesia and Thank you for the honor for being on the program for C today. And today we're talking about the partnership between Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and United Kingdom. Welcome. Thank you so much, Indira. I'm absolutely delighted to be here, and I really wanted to speak to C uh, today. Really important to me. Well, thank you. Now, what brings you to Indonesia at this time, and then how do you see the relationship between Indonesia and UK as a partner? Well, I'm always looking for an excuse to come to Indonesia. Um, it's an incredibly important relationship for us in the region. But particularly this week, we are launching the UK's first ever Southeast Asia Tech Week. And we wanted to do it here in Indonesia because the relationship is so important to us, particularly on tech and innovation. We have been watching what's been happening here in Indonesia. You have an incredible tech ecosystem and we are really, really keen to partner with the companies that we are seeing grow here at an exponential rate. So you've been seeing the growth in Indonesia. Now let me ask you how significant is the trade relationship between the United Kingdom and the ASEAN as a whole and what are the main sectors that are driving this trade? So it's a very interesting time for the relationship between the UK and ASEAN. Um, just uh, last year, or about 18 months ago, we became the UK's, we became ASEAN's first new dialogue partner, the first one in 25 years. And that's real recognition of how important the trading relationship is between the UK and ASEAN. Now, we want to collaborate across a whole range of sectors, but what we're doing is we're listening to ASEAN and asking the states of Southeast Asia, what are the areas that you want to work on with the UK? And in particular, when I'm talking to businesses around the region, to governments around the region, I hear a big demand for infrastructure, for collaboration on infrastructure. We know the demand here is particularly high here in Indonesia, um, but it's also about how do we go about developing that infrastructure, making sure that it's sustainable, making sure it's responsible. We also hear a huge demand for technology, and again, that's why uh, we're launching the UK uh, ASEAN Southeast Asia Tech Week uh, for the very first time. But what kind of technology are we hearing demand for? Um, there's a lot of demand uh, around the Internet of Things, um, in particular, how do you run uh, buildings in a responsible way, recognising that after the pandemic, everyone's coming back to work, um, but energy bills are high, um, the carbon footprint of buildings can be high, and we think we have some great UK tech companies that can help businesses here run efficient and responsible architecture. Oh, so it sounds like the infrastructure and the technology is going hand in hand to build like for the for the exactly. next future. Now, why did the Department for International Trade choose to focus on the Southeast Asia region to, for this event? And what do you see the main opportunities for UK businesses in, in this market? Well, over the next couple of years, uh, the Southeast Asia tech ecosystem is going to be worth at least $360 billion. I mean, it's a really sizable market. Uh, it's a market of 700 uh, million people. Um, and those consumers are very smart. Uh, they're very young. They're very dynamic. And they're looking for interesting products that can help solve uh, problems. And we think that's what we can offer from the UK. I mean, it's worth just saying, if you think, 
things about the UK tech ecosystem because I'm always surprised as I travel around the region that so little is known about the UK tech sector. But there are two things uh, that you should know about the UK tech sector. Um, first of all, there are three countries in the world that have a trillion dollar tech uh, economy. Those are China, the US and the UK. And quite often, people wouldn't expect that third country to That's be the right. UK. <laughs> we also have a huge number of unicorns. There are three countries in the world um, that have the most number of unicorns. And those are the US, China, and the UK. Oh. So there's a bit of work for us to do um, to help uh, consumers and businesses across Southeast Asia understand the UK tech sector and understand how we can support growing businesses here. But there's also a lot for us to learn here. Um, I was at GoTo this morning, incredible company. Uh, I've been watching them for some time and they are really doing so much across so many different sectors. And we have brought 14 UK tech companies here to Indonesia as part of uh, the UK Southeast Asia Tech Week and we brought them to go to because we wanted them to learn from an amazing Indonesian company uh, that has a whole range of products and services. There's pretty much no part of the economy that isn't uh, touched by GoTo. And I understand now it re represents about 2% of Indonesia's GDP. I mean, that's incredible, but it's also trying to be responsible and sustainable. And so we think that maybe there might be some interesting partnerships um, between UK companies and uh, companies like GoTo. So it's a, a watch and see, and we're very excited about the potential. Well, that's great. It sounds like, like not only the, the Indonesia and the Southeast Asia is learning from the UK, but it, it looks like, from what you mentioned, about 14 or 15 companies actually learning from what already exists from like the ecosystem that, for Absolutely. technology in Indonesia. Now, can you tell us more about the activities that are planned for the trade delegation to Southeast Asia, and how will they benefit UK technology companies seeking to expand into the region? Well, what's been really interesting as we were planning uh, this week is the demand from UK companies. There are so many UK companies that want to come here to Indonesia. Uh, we recognize the talent here. You have phenomenal talent. You have great ideas. And as I say, you've got great companies. Um, so the 14 companies that we have brought are handpicked. They particularly focus on green technology and the Internet of Things because those were two areas that we know Indonesia is very interested in. And they're literally in the same building as us here and they're having lots of business to business meetings. Just today they're going to have 73 business to business meetings. And it's been very easy actually from our point of view to make that happen. You could see the real demand um, from different Indonesian companies wanting to meet British companies and, and that's what we're here to facilitate. All right, now Indonesia and the UK signed a joint economic and trade committee agreement in 2022. And now how is the agreement progressed so far and then what do we expect from this agreement? So that's a, a real milestone for the UK-Indonesian relationship. I, I was actually here, as I mentioned before, I've been to Indonesia uh, a lot recently, um, and that was my first visit after the pandemic uh, with our Secretary of State um, for Trade. We were here for this first meeting, uh, we call it the, the JETCO, and that's really formalizing our trading relationship between Indonesia um, and the UK, and it's recognizing that there's some challenges, some areas where we need to work together, um, particularly on market access. How can we make it easier for Indonesian products to come to the UK and for UK products uh, to come to Indonesia? And then it's also recognizing that there are areas that we would like to collaborate on together. So we've mentioned infrastructure, we've mentioned technology, um, but we hear a lot, for example, about the research and development in the UK. The UK has four of the top 10 universities in the world. And that's been an area that um, we've heard a lot of interest from Indonesian ministers. How can we bring uh, the very best ideas uh, from the UK to Indonesia? So that kind of uh, arrangement um, makes it easier to have those formal discussions. And it's also facilitated some new arrangements. So we have a new memorandum of understanding on investment. Uh, for example, to deepen our investment partnership because as we all know the world is complex and challenging at the moment and what we need are more partnerships and more ways of working together. So we're absolutely delighted to have this new formalised relationship with Indonesia. Now the UK government has been actively promoting Industry 4.0, especially here in Southeast Asia. What are some of the key activities that the UK is pursuing to bring the industry to Southeast Asia and what impact do you expect from them and then 
who are the key players on the industry 4.0 and for us the media what can we do to contribute to the revolution of the industry of 4.0 Oh, what a great question. And, and I absolutely think there is a role um, for the media here. Um, as I was saying, the, road, the world is more complex and more challenging. And that means all of us, we need to develop our workforce. Uh, we need to understand how technology can be applied to some of the challenges that we all face, particularly uh, climate change. And this is where Industry 4.0 comes in. It has to be a public-private partnership. And so we need to find better ways um, to work together, not only between uh, governments, but also governments uh, to business. We see a big role for business councils in this, for example. Uh, Indonesia has a very active uh, business council that um, I had the pleasure of working with as part of uh, the G20 and the B20. And I'd like to congratulate you on a fantastic uh, chairmanship. Um, it was a really uh, amazing uh, series of events in, in Bali, and it's always a pleasure to go to Bali. So thank you for that. And of course, we uh, look forward now with Indonesia as chair of ASEAN uh, this year and the UK will be playing a very active role in all of the ASEAN events um, including our ASEAN UK Business Council um, and our uh, UK Business Council based here in Jakarta. So I think it's really important that we bring together the whole ecosystem, everyone that wants to work together in this space and make the most of the challenges and the opportunities and the fact that Indonesia is playing such a leadership role including as chair of um, ASEAN is a real opportunity and we want to support you in doing that. So technology yeah. for net zero has been a major focus recently including clean renewable energy, electric vehicle infrastructure. How will the Department of International Trade help speed up the progress in Indonesia and Southeast Asia and how does the, this opportunity can help Southeast Asia nations support each other to get to that net zero? So I think this is the key opportunity and it's something that the Department for Business and Trade is spending a lot of time on um, because we all recognise the scale of the challenge and the reality is that no country um, can tackle climate change alone. It has to be in partnership. And again, back to what I was saying before, no country or even group of countries can do it alone. It's got to be a um, government, uh, a business, a public-private partnership. So what does that mean in practice? Um, well, firstly, it's about using the very best of the UK's capability. As I mentioned, we have four of the top 10 universities in the world, and we have so many startups now emerging in this space as a product of the research and development happening in uh, UK universities. And we want to bring it uh, to the market, including here in Southeast Asia. And we have lots of British companies that want to come to Southeast Asia because quite often it's countries here they're at the front line of the climate challenge and they want to help uh, but they also want to learn and so it's finding those opportunities so out of the 14 companies um, that we have here in Indonesia today over half of them are what we would call green technology and that's a whole range of uh, mapping the data um, to try and understand how big the problem is through to uh, practical applications that can actually start to solve the problem. So reducing the emissions of buildings, for example. Um, so I, th I think that again shows that there's the opportunity, but what we need to do is help those companies find practical partnerships with Indonesian uh, companies to make a real world difference. Oh, well, it sounds great. I'm looking forward to what's, what those companies can do with the net zero and then, like you said, recognizing where the problem is so we can tackle them quick, quicker than, than later. All right, well, Natalie, thank you for, so much for sharing with us today. I hope I see you again and thank you for the honor. Thank you so much, Indira. Sarah Makassi, and I would absolutely be delighted if you would come to London Tech Week. It's the 12th to 16th of June and we want to see a really great turnout from Indonesia. So I'll see you there. All right, thank you so much. Now, that was our discussion with Natalie Black, His Majesty Trade Commissioner for Asia Pacific from UK Department for Business and Trade. We'll meet again next time. Thank you.